On March 13th, 1995, there was a private after party held for the Soul Train Awards at the El Rey Theater. The mood of the party went from celebratory to violent, with Snoop Dogg instigated gang hostilities as he took the stage to throw up his role in 20 Crip affiliation towards the Pyrus who dominated the theater and were associated with Suge Knight. In retaliation, Quick threw up his treetop gang signs at opposing Crips on stage. Town family, what's the biz? Y'all already know what it is, man. Sending that positive energy to my Ty Town family. Y'all know how I rock. If you haven't already, please hit that like, share, subscribe, and notification button so you can stay up to date with the latest and greatest content you don't want to miss. Tune in, tune in, tune in. Anywho, without further ado, welcome to Ty Town. Welcome to Hood War Stories. In this episode, I'll be discussing the life of DJ Quake. David Blake was born on January 18th, 1970 in Pomona, California, and shortly after relocated to Compton, California. He was raised at 436 West Spruce Street. Spruce Street is narrow, and the bungalows sit so close they seem melted together. On a nearby corner is the church where Quick prayed alone at age nine. His 22 caliber ammunition is still buried in the palm tree that he used to shoot for target practice, the youngest of 10 children. His memories are stained by drive-by shootings when his older sisters mess with the wrong dudes, being bullied by siblings, and an older brother turned crack zombie. Music was always his calling. During thunderstorms, his mother could console him only with Curtis Mayfield records. At age 11, Quick learned synth and DJ parties and school dances. Jobs weren't available, but drugs were, so he sold crack to buy turntables at the Compton City Circuit. After getting bullied a few times, Quick wound up gangbanging and went and got a gun. Although he never got jumped in, Quick joined Treetop Pyro as a teenager. These were guys he grew up with, as he lived in the heart of the neighborhood. When Quick was 17, his family home went into foreclosure. The mortgage tripled. With no job, his mother up and moved to Louisiana and left Quick with his sisters. In 11th grade, Quick dropped out of high school and started recording with Second to None. By 1988, the West Coast experienced a shift from electro rap to gangster rap and Compton became one of the most notorious cities in the country. Selling homemade cassettes out of the trunk, Quick Sound began buzzing from Compton to Pasadena. Profile Records offered Quick a $125,000 advance to press his platinum selling Quick as the name album. He followed it up with three more records that went platinum and gold despite zero East Coast radio play. Although Quick was from Treetop Pyro, he never carried a tough guy persona, nor was he super banged out but he still represented his hood in whatever city he went to. And some of the Crips in these cities would take offense to Quick's representation. Quick would later be known, rocking Chicago White Sox hats with a little red in them, sporting Chicago Bulls gear. This was around the time Michael Jordan and the Bulls came into prominence. So it was just an all around good time to rock red. Drama began popping off while Quick was on the road. On October 13th, 1991, Quick had a show at the Mammoth Event Center in Denver, Colorado. The venue is located on East Colfax Avenue, which was at the time a dangerous strip on the east side of Denver full of drugs and gangs. One of the more infamous gangs in this area was the Trail Crips. They were founded in the late 80s by three teenagers with family ties to the Watts neighborhood in Los Angeles. They were formed on East 30th and Gilpin Street, which was a hotspot for early members. They are noted by Denver PD as being the first gang with the Los Angeles structure to emerge in Denver. So on that night, the trails and other Crips sets bought tickets and flooded Quick's concert. At one point during the show, the Crips began taunting Quick, and Quick responded by flashing gang signs while performing his hit song tonight. He switched the lyric from, fuck it, let's shoot some crabs, to fuck it, let's shoot some Crips. The atmosphere became even more tense. Someone on Quick's side threw 40 ounce beer bottles at the crowd, striking one Crip in the face, permanently scarring him. Another fan was struck in the jaw. DJ Quick proceeded to pour another drink in the faces of the Treos. A melee ensued, and the Crips rushed the stage and began assaulting Quick and his entourage, forcing him to vacate the premises. Two hours later, Denver PD arrested Quick at his hotel near Stapleton. He was charged with misdemeanor assault. Fast forward to almost exactly a year later, on October 19th, 1992, 
Quick arrived at the Denver County Courthouse to a crowd of autograph seeking fans. At least two process servers were there too, waiting to hand him a notice that he was being sued by a fan in the show's promoter. Quick initially tried to dodge the servers by riding the courthouse elevators up and down between floors, but he eventually was served. A couple shows later in Milwaukee, Quick wound up kicking a fan in the face for disrespecting him. While in the Midwest, Quick had a show in St. Louis. Allegedly, Quick got into a physical altercation with 60 Crips after they threw autographed signed paper back in his face. At a showdown in Texas, gang violence erupted at his show in San Antonio, resulting in a man being shot dead in the parking lot. A few seconds later, a back and forth shootout between Quick's team and the Crips commenced. DJ Quick was able to get away unharmed. Shaquille O'Neal happened to be present at the concert that night. Aside from the violence on the road, Quick was also getting into conflict in the rap game. The beef between DJ Quick and MC8 had been brewing for years, with Quick's street top affiliation, and with MC8 being from Drag New Park Comp and Crip, supposedly causing the initial issue between the two artists. After going back and forth with small jabs on various songs for years, it came to a hit when MC8 dissed Quick on three tracks on Compton's Most Wanted Music to Drive By album. Quick clapped back with dollars and cents, which is regarded as one of the most scathing diss tracks of all time. At this stage in his career, Quick had reached a breaking point, felt he was taken advantage of by the people around him. Things started coming up missing. He was fighting people back in his hood and had to keep two guns on his side in the studio. The diss song was mainly directed at MC8, but it was also driven by all the pent up anger Quick was going through at the time. Quick would go on to perform the diss song live at the 1995 Source Awards while staring down MC8 who was watching from the audience. Quick knew where MC8 was going to be seated because the names were taped on the seat staring sound check. Unfortunately, there was a loss of life attributed to this beef. On March 13th, 1995, there was a private after party held for the Soul Train Awards at the El Rey Theater. The mood of the party went from celebratory to violent with Snoop Dogg instigated gang hostilities as he took the stage to throw up his role in 20 Crip affiliation towards the Pyrus who dominated the theater and were associated with Suge Knight. In retaliation, Quick threw up his treetop gang signs at opposing Crips on stage. Quick proceeded to get into altercation with Crips associated with MC8. Quick then grabbed a chair and smashed one of the Crips to the ground. Kelly Jamerson, who was a member of the Rolling 60 Crips, was chased into a lobby where a crowd of 12 to 15 blood surrounded him. Witnesses watched Kelly get his head split by a beer bottle as a group of pyrus closed in and proceeded to beat him to death. Later records would show that sounds were not working for Quick, but for Suge Knight. DJ Quick and MC8 eventually squashed their beef, largely because of maturity and realizing after the deaths of Tupac and Biggie that anyone could die over the nonsense. But in the midst of all the trauma around him, DJ Quick continued to produce masterpieces. He mixed Tupac's All Eyes On Me album in just 48 hours on a vodka and cigarette binge. And he was nearly killed after his security guard took the CD from his car and began sharing it with friends. Unauthorized copies began to spread through Los Angeles. Word got back to Suge Knight about the bootleg CDs, resulting with Quick getting a machine gun pulled in his face, coupled with the beat down. Grief and other memories haunt Quick, such as watching his best friend get shot by his nephew the child pedestrian that he accidentally ran over and killed, the murder of his protege Mossberg, which left Quick so distraught, propelling him to attempt a flying Christ on his Harley and flung on the Pacific Coast Highway. PTSD after an incident when Crips showed up to a funeral to kill him in Inglewood, which resulted in a shootout that left several people wounded. Quick's success in music allowed him to escape the troubled cities for the suburbs near Woodland Hills, Man. but not the people of his past. In 2003, Quick was involved in a family dispute in which he allegedly pistol whipped his sister after she threatened to kidnap his children and extort $2 million from him. He was ultimately sentenced to five months in prison in 2006. His prison sentence gave him time to reflect on his upbringing and gave him a better perspective on his life. But the family drama didn't stop there. In 2013, Quick's daughter Daviana and her boyfriend Darnell were charged with first degree murder in the death of their two year old son. The two-year-old was found dead with bruises covering his body, resulting from an excessive beating from Darnell for wetting his bed. Daviana reportedly told the police she was afraid to intervene after she thought it would only anger Darnell even more. When Kid. Daviana came back from work, she found her son not breathing. Crazy. She was ultimately sentenced to 12 years in prison. As she should. 
The Blake family endured another challenging period in 2022 when Quick's son David Martin Blake Jr. was arrested for murder. He's been arrested on suspicion of murder. 27-year-old David Blake Jr., who is seen here in this video, was picked up in Porter Ranch early Thursday morning. He's accused in the shooting death of 33-year-old Julio Cordoza last week in Downey. Cordoza died from a shingle, single gunshot wound to the chest. Blake has worked as a liaison, though, to the Compton City Councilman Isaac Galvan, who's being removed from office following accusations of election fraud. Compton's mayor, Emma Sharif, issued a statement sending thoughts and prayers to all of the families involved, saying that their lives have been changed forever. Mr. Blake's bail has been set at $2 million. Crazy. After an historic term in the career that spans more than three decades, quick for the first time in a long time, is clear-headed about the future and is operating at a different frequency. Recently, Quick has spent time in the studio with Mustard and Vince Staples for upcoming projects. At some point, he plans to release new music, but for now, he is content in this new period of his life, which is all about taking a backseat to produce for other artists. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to start off with saying this. Uh, DJ Quit, an uh, absolute West Coast legend that don't get enough credit. You know what I mean? He do not get the credit he's deserved. Um, it's pretty interesting hearing that story. You know, what's funny is my brother always compared me to him coming up. My bro, uh, 48, always, always told me that uh, I reminded him a quick. Man, that's a pretty dope story, man. Shout out to DJ Quick. Uh, dang, I ain't know that about his son. That was my first time hearing that story about his son. Hold your head up, man. RP to the fella, uh, the, the man that lost his life. Y'all already know, man. Dang, we don't condone no goofy, man. Hey, that was a good story, man. Shout out to DJ Quick. I want to appreciate everybody for tuning in. Another one, Todd Town. You already know, man. I appreciate all the love and the support. Everybody that's rocking, if you haven't already, please hit that like, share, subscribe, and notification button so you can stay up to date with the latest and greatest content. And as always, I'm checking out. Peace. Yeah. Whoa.